Memory stores are similar to data stores because like data stores, they're just data structures. The difference is that memory stores are faster and they have a limit on how long data can be in there for. This is why the creator documentation recommends you use it for things that change rapidly, like matchmaking queues. There are two types of data structure within memory stores that you need to know about. Let's get into them. Because memory stores can only be accessed from the server, make a normal script in server script service. Then let's get the memory store service. The first is a queue. You can imagine a queue as an array such as this. This is most similar to a queue because like a queue, this doesn't have any key value pairs. A memory store queue just sorts items based on their numerical priority if you choose to set them or by the order they were added in. Let me show you an example of what you can do with memory store queues. Firstly, let's get or make a queue. We can call it whatever we want. I'll just call it hello world. So let's say we wanted to add something to this queue. We do queue and call a member function, which is add async. Then obviously because we don't need a name for it, we can just put, for example, hello in here. Then as you see here, we need an expiration. This is the amount of time in seconds before the value is deleted from the queue. The maximum amount of time you can have is 45 days, which is, which is 3,888,000 seconds. Then I'll just add something else to the queue, same world. These are both at the same priority at the moment, so when we read them from the queue, we'll get them in the order that they were added. Let me show you. Because we want two from this queue, we put two for the count. All or nothing is if anything at all should be returned if there are less than two entries to the queue. By default it's false, meaning that even if there are fewer than two items in the queue, we will get that one item. And then the wait timeout is how long it will wait before timing out if it can't find the right amount of items. I'll just put that to one second. Ah. I just got this error because my place wasn't published. Like with data stores, you need to publish your place to be able to use this. So let me just publish this now. So here we'll get our results, which are hello world. But let's say we wanted world to come first. We could obviously just put world in here before hello because they're at the same priority at the moment. But if we wanted to add world after hello, we just set world at a higher priority than hello is. So for example, if I put one here and two here, it will come back with world hello. This function returns two values. One of the values is the table of the results that have been gotten from the queue. The other one is an identifier for the results. So I can print these separately. And then I can obviously do everything that I can do with a normal table with the results variable because it is returned as a table. So I can get the value at any index in this table. But let's say that later we wanted to remove these two items from the queue. Then we could use the identifier we got earlier to remove the items from the queue. Then we can get a sorted map in the exact same way we could get a queue, but with this function. Sorted maps are similar to queues, but unlike queues, they have key value pairs, so they're more like a table rather than an array. Rather than an array. Let's look at how you'd make a value for a sorted map. You do set async set the key, I'll just put that as hello for now, and any value you'd want, so that can be a number, it could be a boolean, it could be another string, like this. Once again, you've got to set an expiration, and here it explicitly says the maximum is this amount of time. And then to be honest, I don't know what sort key is, and I don't think you need to know what it is either, because I've never had to use it and I can't find anything about it in the documentation. And then if I wanted to get the value of hello in the future, I could just get async hello. And then let's say I just want to print this. 
You can also treat this like a cube as well. So for example, if I were to set two things in this map, swap the bounds around. I could then use get range async. Here we can set the direction it starts from. So enum sort direction and then we can either have ascending or descending order i'll do ascending for now and then the count i've only got two so i'll do two but you can do any number you want up to the amount that you have the exclusive lower bound and exclusive upper bound are mainly for numbers let's say i only wanted values to be returned that were between one and ten I could put my exclusive lower bound as 0 and my exclusive upper bound as 11, but it's not really applicable here. The sorting is actually for the keys, not the values, but the bounds are still applicable to the values. Then, let's say I wanted to remove world from the map. I could get key, hello, and say sorted map, remove async, and then hello. And then we could use update async to update a value, but this is useful for when we want to use the current value to get the new value. So for example, for example, in math functions or concatenation functions, I'll show you an example. Let's say I want to update the value with the key hello. So I'd be updating this. And let's say when I update it, I want to add one more exclamation mark. We can have a function in here. And then the function will take the value as input and should return the new value. So here I can just return the value with an extra exclamation mark on the end. Because it doesn't matter what the input value is, I can run this multiple times without worrying about it. It will just have the same effect of adding an exclamation mark on the end every single time. So for example, I could put this in a for loop to do it three times. And then at the end of this, I can print sorted map get async hello. Before I show you the result of that, I should also point out that we need to put the expiration in here again. So as we can see, it added three extra exclamation marks on the end, which is basically the same as a sorted map but with less functionality. You can get a hash map in the same way but obviously with the function get hash map instead. A hash map has exactly the same functionality as a sorted map but without the get range async. Obviously, if you're doing anything in production, you should wrap all of these as you should with any asynchronous function in a P call. Memory stores are a lot less likely to fail than data stores are, but the possibility is still there.